It's time for Talking Pints. Yes, that time of the day, and I'm very pleased to say I'm joined by Luther Blissett. Luther, welcome. My pleasure. To the programme. Now... And that's chin, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I d don't believe a word of it. <laughs> He's still fighting for it in every way. Luther, first generation mm. immigrant to Britain. Yeah. Um, what was it like when you first came here? Oh, this, well, I mean, when I arrived, it would have been, what, 62, 63 when I arrived. And yeah. Coming from the Caribbean where it's warm, it's sunny and that sort of thing, you know, you run around, as a kid, as you mean, imagine a five, six-year-old, you run around, um, you know, in bare feet all the time and you, you know, you, you're like maybe a quarter of a mile from the actual Caribbean Sea as well. So it, it was, I mean, for a young boy, it's the most idyllic place ever to be in, to live on an island in the Caribbean. So it was something that I never, ever thought at any stage that it would be somewhere I'd end up here in England. But um, it's funny how things go, and I've loved my time um, in England. But you grabbed an opportunity in England that you wouldn't probably have got. No. In Jamaica. I mean, you might have played cricket, who knows? Yeah. Well, or... cricket, cricket actually was the main thing that we played. We played cricket on the beach, but anywhere we were playing cricket. I actually broke my left arm playing cricket because... Uh, I think my brother, I think, pushed the baby roller over. <laughs> but, you know, still didn't stop us from playing. Well, did. cricket's loss was football's gain. So, you know, you're here, you're obviously a talented sports player, natural ball player. Football is your game. And you're really quite young, aren't you, when you get involved with Watford? It was, yeah. I mean, I was, what, uh, I was 15, probably just turned 14, 15 when I first uh, came to Watford and... Um, it was only through Paul Kitson, who was at my school at Wilsdon High, and he went to Watford. Um, uh, you know, he signed for Watford as a professional. And uh, it was him coming back to the school, and I think it would have been about August, September time. And you can imagine all of us heard this. So, mm. you know, there's a football in the building, so we've all gone to have a chat with him in the common room. And um, he said, you know, there's an open trials being held at RAF Stanmore. You know, you boys should go along. Nine of us went, and, and I was the only one that made a career out of it. So... It, it was the right thing for me. You go to Watford. You spent a lot of years at Watford. There were some big names around Well, Watford. the biggest name of all, you know, um, Sir Elton John. Before, you know, before he became... I mean, there, there was no bigger name, really. And he was a complete... And still is. Yeah. A complete Watford devotee. Oh, yeah. Oh, completely. And I remember the first time I actually saw him. We used to train there on a... Um, at the ground on a Monday evening after school so you'd come up on the train and you'd get there and we'd train we'd be running around and up and down the terraces and uh, as we were doing this we in the tunnel this chap appeared and these huge lapels these glasses and these and we went who's that and we hadn't we us from wills that had no idea who he was so, <laughs> <laughs> we were, you know we were sort of bob marley and all that kind of stuff and it was nothing to do with that so uh, so it was it was really it was really good and that was the first time i actually uh, actually met um met Hunt and john he adores the club. Oh, he does, yeah. He's always adored the club. He's pumped mm. money into it. He's given it publicity. He finished up, um, Luther, a massive fan of yours. Yeah, well, I think... He said you were Watford's favourite son. He did, and, uh, I mean, I was, I, was, <laughs> I was quite taken aback by that. Um, but, you know, we used to do things at Watford, such as supporters would sponsor bits of everybody's kit and whatever, and have a good... Um, he had a real sort of presentation dinner at the end of the season, but you'd sit with your sponsors at the table. And his mother... Um, was one of my sponsors, Sheila Fairbrother. She was one of my sponsors. And so, yeah, we really got to know him and her and the family really well. And we all got on because Watford was a family. And this was all down to um, Graham Taylor because Graham Taylor was yeah. the one that really lit the blue touch paper when he arrived in 77 at Watford. I went on to become England manager yeah. and other things in later years. But the really interesting part of that journey, Luther, I think, is that you know, when, when you go to Watford, it is in old money. Yeah. It's a fourth... Division. It was side. Yeah. So you're in the football league, but you're right down. But you don't care. You don't care. It's it's every boy and now it's every girl's dream, which is brilliant. But you know, at the time we are now, to be a professional footballer. And for me, that came true. Um, it started in fourth division. Wouldn't it was never a problem. Fourth division. No. All I wanted to do was to be a professional footballer, and I had that opportunity to do it at Watford. And um, again, all things fell together really well. But the journey. Yeah. Tell us about the journey from the fourth division. Oh, the journey was incredible. Signed by Mike Keane. Uh, so a year after Mike Keane signed me, well, the Mike Keane left, Graham Taylor arrived. And for myself and a lot of the younger players that were hoping to make a name for themselves, it, it opened the doors. Graham Taylor just wanted young players to 
come in and show what their worth was. So he gave you that opportunity, and as long as you show that you're good enough, you know, then and you, you know, go and you go it. from the fourth division. Fourth division, which was just amazing. So we won the fourth division, um, we came second in the third division, and in that third division, one of the big games I remember is uh, beating Manchester United in the League Cup on a Tuesday night up in Manchester. So there was me, I think I was pretty good cool. at the time, uh, you know, scoring both goals and we beat them 2-1. So <laughs> something really special for myself. But for Watford, it was just amazing to see the rise and the way this club went, you know, four, third. Um, we had three seasons, then the second, and then got into the first division, which is now I the mean, Premier League, which is, which is unheard of. Will we ever see the likes of that again? I doubt it, the way football is now. And finishing second to Liverpool at that time, um, it, was, it was just incredible. You see, the problem is now, isn't it? You know, to go up through the divisions, up through, you know, one, two, the championship and on to the Premier League. Uh, to do that, you'd now need a couple of hundred million, wouldn't you? <laughs> a bit more than that. Sorry, <laughs> OK. <Yeah. laughs> I think we'd need Chelsea money to do that. I but think. in those days, yeah. I mean, clearly there was money in football when you were playing. It. I mean, the, the money, the money in football, yeah, but players would be bought for £20,000 and... Yeah. Thirty thousand pounds and yeah. that sort of thing. You know, my first wages as a professional footballer at the age of seventeen was thirty pounds a week, which is an absolute fortune. Uh, you know, when you think of, of that time, of what you could buy with um, with thirty pounds. I remember going home, um, having been paid that first Friday, with thirty pounds in your pocket yeah. plus a signing on fee, and you're walking down the high street from Wilsdon Junction yeah. to home. And I'm thinking, I can buy that, buy that. In the minute, it was just wonderful. Please, given the number of goals you scored, what uh, would you get paid there? Oh goodness me, a goal per game as well. I'd say, no, I want a goal bonus. <laughs> I, I remember saying that to Graham Terry. He says, "What? That's what you're in the team to do. So why should I? So why should I pay you again for that?" But you're right. That journey from the bottom of the football league to the very top it's very difficult to see it being. Yeah, repeated. it's impossible for it to be done now because which is very sad. Actually, it is. It is because that is the dream. And again, another reason why we all love football the way it was back then was you as a fourth division, a non-league, you could be playing, as it is now, you could be in Man City at home or away in the FA Cup because yeah. that was all part yeah. of it. Which, and yeah. that is the and beauty see, and the yeah. magic I've been of seeing Grimsby the other country. day and, and all Oh, of that. incredible, I mean, yeah. And there is magic to that, isn't there? Oh, totally. We they saw were, Wrexham give it a good try as well, you know, yeah. which is amazing. Now, as Watford, you know, went up through the league, you became an incredibly prominent personality and player <clears throat> in a football world where there weren't not that many black players. No, there wasn't. There were very few. I mean, I, I think I counted probably about five and I was one of the five. Yes. Um, when I started, you had people like Adi Koki, you had um, Clyde Best, yep. you had Brendan Batson, um, Laurie Cunningham and, you know, that was pretty good. And, and then the, myself and I. And, and for you, the England call. That. The England call. England beckons. call is one of those things you dream about. You know, you... you you have these dreams, I want to play for this club and I want to play for England. You want to walk out at Wembley and you want to score at Wembley. And that came true for me, which is just like absolutely incredible. That. Well, it came through in quite a big way, really, because you, you know, got a hat-trick on yeah. your debut. And, 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 you know, the thing about that, Nigel, as well, is, that, you know, we're talking about it, you know, the first black player to score yeah. for England. And that never crossed my mind. And even when it happened, I never... It never really registered how, how big a moment mm. that was. Not until many years later. It was actually when I went to school doing some other things that um, one of the kids said it, and that's when it really resonated with me after yeah, that. Yeah, well, for those watching on telly, we got some shots of, of Luther on that big day. <laughs> and, you know, you played, you played quite a few games for England. Uh, you didn't get the chance to score many more goals. No, I think the thing is... You know, I mean, that's down to me. That's yeah. down to me. Yeah. I, can't, I don't blame anybody else for it because you walk out to that football pitch and what you do, you do it to the best of your ability on that day. And certain days it just doesn't happen. And for me, the opportunities were there, but I didn't take them in, in one or two other games. So it comes to an end a bit abruptly. But, you know, yeah. that's life. Uh, but you still got your, your <coughs> club career. Where well, you, you made it, you, you did, did it. And then you did time at AC Milan. Yes, yeah. and you went around a bit and then you, you know, then you finish up in the end, back at Watford. I did, yeah, on my third, uh, my third stint um, was there, but in the middle, I, st I went to Bournemouth for Bournemouth, three seasons yeah. and it was fantastic. I mean, I played, I played, I think, about 120-odd games for Bournemouth and scored 56 goals, so the ratio was, was, was decent there as well. And that's the one thing I pride myself on, is that my job as a striker was to score goals. And that's what I attempted to do every time I went on the pitch. And, you know, ended back at, back at Watford after the third spell and then joining the coaching team with Graham Taylor, getting promotion to the Premier League for the first time at Watford as being part of that man management team was, again, a, 
a, you know, a great moment for myself and the club and everybody involved. And you've done, you know, the last few years you've done charity work. Yeah. You've done all sorts of things. And you were, you were recognised last year. Unbelievable. I mean, and by... And she's sadly no longer with us. No. Her Majesty the Queen. Yeah, yeah, I was, you, on, yeah I, I, was, I was awarded an OBE. You wanted to sort of the last OBEs. That's right, yeah. I was in that last honours list that she, that she did before she passed. And I, I just couldn't believe it um, when the letter fell on the, on the mat at home, you know, from the Cabinet Office, because obviously the war in Ukraine had started and whatever, and this letter, oh, and I went, I wonder what's in that. I think I'm too old now to join the army or whatever. <laughs> now, this, I think, it can't be that. And uh, so, yeah, I look, and that's what it was, and I was just absolutely blown away by it. It's uh, an incredible honour, and it's something I'm hugely proud of. And, um, you know, and I've said it when I spoke about it often, OBE meaning, you know, on behalf of everyone, and that's the people that I worked with and helped me achieve the things that I did. So, um, yeah, it, it is an amazing honour. No, it's fantastic. And a final thought, Luther, you know, football today, compared to 40 years ago, would you rather play now in the Premier League with all the money you could make? No. Would you rather have played as you did? I say that when I played and players like myself, that was, the, for me, the golden era of what football was about. Yes, you know, certain clubs, you know, they did get paid very well, but it was about the football. And every team had their own identity about the way they went about playing their football and, you know, and contributed to success or whatever they had. I just find football now that everybody tries to play the game the way Man City plays it. And one thing I learned playing sport or in anything, you never take somebody on at their own game. And too many clubs, I think, try to play football that way when they don't have the players mm. to achieve it. And, you know, it plays in the hands of teams like um, um, of Man City and others because they will always be better than you. Yeah, don't try and copy the original. It's not going to work. <laughs> no, absolutely. Well, I have to say, delightful guest to have on Talking Pines. Fantastic career. And I think, I think, I tell you what, you're part of a very elite batch of people. To have been in that Queen's last honours list is a very... Very special thing, yeah. and in your case, thoroughly deserved. I'm very pleased. Thank you very much. And Thank very you very honest. much indeed. Thank you.